Installing SQL Server 2005 is pretty straightforward and Microsoft's really improved the process, but there are some things that you need to be aware of and so let's go through them in this video. First of all, there are some hardware requirements you're going to have to meet to achieve a successful installation and we're going to talk about those hardware requirements in a later video. In this video, I want to concentrate on the software requirements. These are the ones that can tend to drive you nuts when you're trying to get this thing set up the first time. So let's look at those in detail. First off, you need to have an operating system that SQL Server 2005 is happy with. And we'll start off with the Windows Server 2003 family. Now, this can be Standard Edition, Enterprise Edition, Data Center Edition, or the embedded Windows Server 2003 operating system. So either of those are fine. As long as you have a legal working copy of Windows Server 2003 of any of those editions, you're ready to go. Now. The next one is the Windows 2003 Web Edition. So if you have that, you're okay. Now the XP family, as long as you have XP Home, XP Professional, Media Center, or XP Embedded, you will be okay provided you have Service Pack 1 or higher loaded. Now as is the case usually with Microsoft installations, and it's no different with SQL 2005, when you try to install SQL Server, it's going to check for these things and report back to you what it doesn't like. And you're going to have to take care of that before you can continue the installation. Actually, you're going to have to kill the installation, take care of the problem, and start over. And it may take you a time or two to get all those taken care of. Now, on the Windows 2000 operating system, and that's a big question a lot of people have, can I run this on Windows 2000? The answer is yes. If you have advanced server, server, even professional, or of course data center, with the Windows 2000 operating system, you have to have Service Pack 4 or higher. And of course, this adds the .NET framework and some other functionalities, so you can still run Windows 2000 and make this happen. Now, there's some other software that you have to have. This is not too surprising, but you just need to be aware of it. You need Internet Explorer 6.0. That's Service Pack 1 or higher on uh, Internet Explorer 6.0. And uh, that's required for the Microsoft Management Console, by the way. Uh, you need Internet Information Services 5.0 or higher, and this is required for reporting services, which we'll take a real quick look at later on the course. TCP IP Networking, you'll need to have up and running. That's not a big one. Most people already have that going. This is kind of interesting. You do need the Microsoft.NET Framework 2.0. Now, you don't have to install this, though, if the installation detects that the .NET Framework 2.0 is not on your machine, it will automatically install it for you. The same thing goes for the Windows Installer, which is an interesting little twist here. You now use the Windows Installer system to install SQL Server. This is actually very good. Microsoft's included it here because it makes it much easier to maintain the installation and to change the installation and to delete the installation cleanly. So, that's the preparation that you need to go through on the software side. Go through this checklist, and once you've got all this ready and you're in compliance, you're ready to install SQL Server 2005, provided you meet hardware requirements, which we're going to take a look at in the next video.